Micro and Nano Manufacturing ME 474 Module 2 Part 1 Presented by Jithu C. John Assistant Professor Department of Mechanical Engineering Government Engineering College, Kojikode Introduction to Mechanical Micromachining it includes machining high aspect ratio microstructures using diamond coated cutting tools with bespoke profiles. Materials such as silicon, silicon based materials, and engineering materials such as copper, aluminium, and iron based alloys are used for micro machining. Microfluidic devices are machined with mechanical based machining processes. Micro drilling it can produce holes with good roundness, straightness, and surface roughness in a short processing time. Useful for machining components with many holes, such as a nozzle, polarizing plate, and photo mask. Widely used in the manufacture of printed circuit boards, PCBS, in which numerous micro trough holes have to be drilled. EDM drilling not acceptable in PCB manufacture because of their inferior hole quality and accuracy. The first figure shows the micro drill with its features like rake face, clearance angle, cutting edge, and flank face. The second figure shows a micro drill fabricated using wire electro discharge grinding. This figure illustrates the working of micro drill. The workpiece or green body is rigidly located by using special jigs. Backup plate is used to allow overrun for the drill bit. Elastic foundation gives cushioning effect for the drilling process and absorb shock waves that may reflect back to the micro drill. Lubrication oil is supplied by an auxiliary tube. Tool life of micro drills decreased linearly with feed rate because of abrasive wear and chip loading. Three important problems associated with micro drilling are increase of the cutting force wandering motion of the drills, and tool breakage. As the drill bit penetrates the workpiece, the cutting forces acting on the drill bit increase. The friction between the flute and the cut surface of the workpiece caused from the chip produced during cutting is a primary cause of cutting forces increase. Drilling of high aspect ratio holes becomes difficult due to tool breakage, especially when drilling a deep hole. Because of the low rigidity of micro drills and the tendency for the chip to clog inside the hole, it is highly complex process. Use of cutting fluid seems to be ineffective in micro drilling because cutting fluid cannot penetrate into the cutting zone. Because of friction there is an increase of trust force during the micro drilling process. Chip clogging and the increase of temperature within the hole lead to premature tool breakage in micro drilling. Peck drilling it is a method in which a hole is drilled at an intermittent feed in order to facilitate chip removal and tool cooling. Through the monitoring system, the proper one-step feed length, OFSL, was determined to be about one-tenth of the tool diameter. Peck drilling lower the productivity compared to continuous drilling. To enhance the productivity of mechanical micro-drilling, the spindle rotational frequency is controlled by using a numerical control. It is a sliding mode control algorithm that can estimate the torque variation of the drill. From the variation of the spindle angular velocity, it analyzes and perform the control accordingly. Since the increase of cutting forces was controlled, tool life, stabilization of the wandering motion, and positioning of the holes were improved. Microdrilling tools. The end of the microdrill is called the chisel edge, at a negative rake angle. Micro-grain tungsten carbide or cobalt steel is used as tool material. The tool size of 0.03 mm in diameter to 0.50 mm in diameter, with increments of 0.01 mm is available for general use. The drills do not have helical flute, so the chip removal from the hole more difficult. Only drills with a diameter of 50 micrometers and larger can be made as twist drills. The figure shows the general geometry of a spade type micro drill. Typical material is tool steel or micrograin tungsten carbide. The figure illustrates the working of peck drilling mode. Peck drilling, 
or interrupted cut drilling, is used to keep swarf from detrimentally building up when drilling deep holes, approximately when the depth of the hole is three times greater than the drill diameter. Peck drilling involves plunging the drill partway through the workpiece, no more than five times the diameter of the drill, and then retracting it to the surface. This is repeated until the hole is finished. This process is faster, but is only used in moderately long holes, otherwise it will overheat the drill bit. It is also used when drilling stringy material to break the chips. A thin cutting fluid is also recommended to aid in chip clearing. Chips left in the hole can cause the drill to wander from an axial path. For most metals, typical spindle speeds are in the 2000 to 4000 RPM. Micro drilling has one major disadvantage because of the drill geometry. Because of the drill point, a flat bottomed hole cannot be produced. The figure shows an SEM image of a micro drilled hole in aluminium 6061 T6 alloy. The hole is 200 micrometer deep and 200 micrometer in diameter. The larger chips were not effectively removed from the hole. Micro turning Macro turning is applicable to component diameters of greater than or equal to 1 mm, whereas micro turning is applicable when the diameter of the component is less than 1 mm. The material is not removed by shear along the grain boundaries but across the grains. The workpiece deflects while turning and it causes a large variation in shape and size. With micro turning, a ratio of tolerance to the size of the component similar to that achieved in macro turning cannot be attained. Macro machines have comparatively lower spindle speeds and coarser feet and depth of cut values, whereas in micro turning the reverse is the case. Micro turning, the tool cutting edge radius is of the order of a few hundreds of nanometers. Polycrystalline diamond, PCD, and cubic boron nitride, CBN, are used as tool materials for optimum result. The range of uncut chip thickness under this condition is 0.1 to 10 micrometer. Thrust component and friction at the tool workpiece interface cause deflection of the workpiece. Microturning is carried out with different types of machines. Figure 3.1 shows the most commonly used configurations of the machines. The most popular among them are tool based, they are generally used for turning soft materials, whereas non-conventional type machines, namely, electrical discharge machines and wire electrical discharge grinding, are used for turning hard materials and very small diameter electrodes that are difficult to machine by other means. For the mass manufacture of micro-turned components, machines with rotating tools are used when the raw material is in coil form, and machines with rotating workpieces and stationary multiple tools are used when the raw material is a bar stock. This type of machine is extensively used for making components with a uniform diameter and without any steps. The figure schematically shows a typical crack initiation and material separation path. In the case of brittle materials, the failure is initiated again at grain boundaries, but the failure mode is brittle fracture. Deflection of the workpiece during microturning causes Permanent deformation of the workpiece. Wobbling or bending of the workpiece leading to breakage while machining. Lengthening or stretching of the workpiece. Figure schematically show the deflection of the workpiece under the cutting condition and the variation in chip thickness, depicted as diameter, as a result of the deflection of a micro-turned shaft. It is seen that the diameter increases with increasing length of the workpiece, indicating that the uncut chip thickness is decreasing more at the free end and less at the fixed end as a result of deflection. Maximum deflection will be at the free end, and maximum bending stress will be at the fixed end of the workpiece. In microturning, some amount of the material flows in the axial direction of the workpiece, causing an increase in length. To reduce deflection in microturning, Balancing the thrust forces with multiple tools. Step turning. A very effective way of micro turning is the balancing of the reaction forces acting on the workpiece. 
reactive forces created by the tools should be such that the resultant reaction that causes deflection of the workpiece becomes zero. A schematic arrangement as shown in figure with three tools positioned at regular spacing balances the thrust force and overcomes the deflection. The thrust force and the workpiece deflection increase with increasing grain size. The cutting force ratio gives good indication of the effectiveness of the material removal in microturning. A sharper cutting edge is one of the prime requirements of the microturning process. Brittle materials pose larger problems and are more prone to breakage during machining. Materials with larger modulus of elasticity values are less prone to deflect and are more suitable for microturning. Some of the important factors that affect the surface finish value in microturning are shown in figure. Being an ultra precision machining process, microturning is capable of generating high levels of surface finish on the components. However, the surface finish value is affected by many factors, including machine tool condition, work material properties, tool geometry, and cutting parameters. Hard materials such as tungsten can be microturned by wire electrical discharge grinding or EDM. When very small diameter components with larger length to diameter ratios are to be microturned, Non-conventional microturning is the most suitable method. The given table summarizes some of the important application areas and some actual products. Diamond microturning. Microturning is performed mostly as diamond turning process. It is used to produce very smooth surfaces with highly precise geometries for optical and many other applications. Diamond is superb because of its high hardness, stiffness, thermal conductivity, low friction, in air, and relative inertness. Elements with no unpaired D-subshell electrons are regarded as diamond machinable. This is a schematic diagrams of, a, diamond turning on a multi-axis ultra-precision lathe, b, relative positions of the workpiece and diamond tool, and, c, microstructured surface and the tool path above the reference plane. Metals like indium, tin, lead, zinc, plutonium, magnesium, aluminum, germanium, silver, gold, copper, beryllium, and silicon can be used for diamond microturning. Elements with unpaired D-shell electrons are regarded as non-diamond machinable. Uranium, manganese, nickel, cobalt, iron, titanium, chromium, vanadium, rhodium, ruthenium, niobium, molybdenum, tantalum, rhenium, and tungsten are considered as non-diamond machinable. With these materials the carbon in diamond will be readily absorbed by the workpiece unless the diffusion rate can be significantly lowered, for example, by cryogenic cooling. Image shows orbital electrons and its arrangements. Electrons move in every direction, but they are limited to their own area, or the orbit that the electron follows, which is what we call shells. Shells are divided into subshells. There are four types of subshells. Namely, S, P, D, and F. Each of these subshells, S, P, D, and F, can hold specific maximum numbers of electrons, S equals 2, P equals 6, D equals 10, and F equals 14. These subshells are further divided into orbitals. Orbitals are regions within an atom that the electron will most likely occupy. This image shows diamond micro-turning process with its important components such as vacuum chuck, workpiece adapter, force sensor, coolant nozzle, and tool post. The figure shows ultrasonically assisted single-point diamond turning of optical mold of tungsten carbide. Tool inserts and tool holder. Image shows different diamond micro-turning inserts and tool holder. Diamond has three different species that are used for machining. Natural single crystal diamond, polycrystalline diamond, synthetic diamond. Natural single crystal diamond. 
these are relatively expensive, has multiple crystal orientations thus giving differing machining results, and contains impurities. It is used in precision machining. It is brazed to a steel tool shank for use. The radius of the cutting edge is 0.5 mu m. Polycrystalline diamond. It consists of small particles of diamond, on the order of micrometers to tens of micrometers, mixed with a binder, normally cobalt based. The Surmets type mixture is then formed and sintered into the shape of the cutting tool. It is brazed or attached to a steel shank for use in the machining operation. This diamond is not used for optical applications in a single point turning operation because it involves grinding rather than conventional chip making. Extensively used in grinding operations. Synthetic diamond. This type is used where the control on the impurities is important. It is more controllable and predictable tool material. The cost of synthetic diamond tools are very high. The dissolution diamond can be slowed and the tool life extended if the machining takes place at cryogenic temperatures, generally at a liquid nitrogen temperature of 150 C. At these temperatures, the ultimate material strength and the modulus of elasticity increase, while the thermal conductivity drops. Diamond tools are generally used with a nominal rake angle near zero degrees. In metals, a slightly negative, a degree or two, rake angle can improve the surface finish. Whereas in plastics a slightly positive rake angle has good surface finish. Primary clearance angles are in the range of 6 to 10 degrees. Diamond micromachine surfaces normally have optical qualities with a very low surface roughness, RA5NM. Radial depth of cut, RDOC, for roughing is generally in the range of 50-15 μm for metals ranging from soft to hard. Feed rate is 1040 μm slash rev. Finishing depth of cut is typically around 1 μm for hard and 3 μm for soft metals. The image shows diamond micro turning of micro mechanical components. Optical elements produced by the means of diamond turning are used in optical assemblies in telescopes, video projectors, missile guidance systems, lasers, scientific research instruments. Thanks for watching this video. This module is continued in next video as part 2 of module 2. Please subscribe to this channel for more lecture videos. Until next time. Adios.